I'll make a brand new start of it in old New Leon. What is up, you guys? Gold Pony here today in the new 2020 Hyundai Elantra courtesy of Jack G. Balvo Hyundai in York, PA. And so today I'm in Hyundai's second longest running nameplate in the Hyundai lineup. That is the Elantra. First introduced to the US in 1992. And if you guys pick up a Consumer Reports magazine, you will see that the Elantra is constantly ranked above average reliability every single year. So it is definitely a solid pick. The question is, can it stack up to cars like the Corolla and Civic? And so today I intend to find that out. So. As always, you guys, let's start with pricing. And so as you could probably expect, there will be several different trim levels for the 2020 Elantra. First one being the SE, starting at $18,950. SEL starts at $19,700. Value Edition at $20,600. Then there is the Eco for $21,250. Limited, which is the one we have today, that is gonna start at $22,800. And lastly, there is the Sport. That one is gonna start at $23,800. And so as you could probably imagine with all of those trim levels, there are a few different engine setups to be paired up with them as well. First one being a naturally aspirated two liter inline four cylinder. This one is gonna belong to the SE, SEL value and limited, therefore the one we have today. That one is gonna put out 147 horsepower at 6,200 RPM, 132 pound feet of torque available at 4,500 RPM. Power is sent to the front wheels for every single engine setup actually through a smart stream IVT. What the world is an IVT you may be asking is kind of similar to a CVT. So just think of it like that basically. But altogether MPG numbers on this first engine setup is going to come in at 30 in the city, 40 on the highway. And so then the second engine setup I'm going to go over is specific to the Eco trim level. This one is a 1.4 liter turbocharged inline four cylinder, putting out 128 horsepower, 156 pound feet of torque, again sent to front wheels, but this time through a seven speed dual clutch, giving you MPG numbers just slightly better, 33 city, 41 on the highway. And lastly, the engine setup belonging to the more powerful sport trim level, the one comparable to the Civic Si, I guess you could say. This one is going to be a 1.6 liter turbocharged inline four cylinder, putting out 201 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, 195 pound feet of torque, available at 1,500 RPM. Set to the front wheels once again through a seven speed dual clutch, giving you a zero to 60 time, you guys, 6.3 seconds. That is rather impressive for that car. With MPG numbers 26 in the city, 33 on the highway. Still kind of impressive given the zero to 60 ton there. So that's pretty cool. But so then before we do any kind of accelerations, which we are going to do in a second here, did want to mention there are some drive modes. Drive mode button is located just to the left of the shifter there. That's going to give you things like normal, sport, and smart. And that is going to be available for all trim levels, by the way. But so those drive modes essentially will adjust things like the shift points, the throttle response, and actually the steering sensitivity as well. So what do you say? Let's go ahead since we're sitting at a red light waiting for a green light here let's put it in sport driving mode let's go ahead and do a quick little acceleration see how quickly we can get this new 2020 Elantra here up to speed <laughs> I like it I actually kind of like that it is a very nice engine sound to it especially for it just being the base basic engine setup I really like that. Uh, it's not the fastest thing in the world. It's not going to be like the sport trim level, but it has enough get up and go to get you merged onto the highway. And I, honestly, again, I really like the feel of that. It's not too bad. And so to go along with that, braking is equally important. And actually between the trim levels, braking is going to differ slightly. For example, if you went with the SE trim level or the Eco trim level, you will find front disc rear drum brakes. So not as potent of a braking setup as all the other trim levels because if you went with any of the other trim levels, you will find four wheel disc brakes. And actually you're gonna get larger front rotors if you were to go with that sport trim level as well. I should mention that, but overall braking feel today has been perfectly fine. No issues with bringing the Elantra to a stop. And again, I do have the four wheel disc brakes today. So that's definitely nice. Touching on handling and suspension a little bit up front you will find a mcpherson strut front suspension in the back a coupled torsion beam rear axle and so having said that i will say the ride quality isn't bad definitely is i guess as expected for the elantra but again a lot of the competitors do use an independent multi-link rear suspension with that setup you will get a smoother ride as well as a little better handling and actually that independent multi-link rear suspension will come 
standard on the sport trim level. So that is where you're gonna get the best ride quality and handling capabilities because that rear suspension is gonna be a little better than the torsion beam rear axle that we do have today. But still, again, not that bad of a ride quality. I haven't had any issues there. And when it comes to the steering feel, I actually kind of like it, but I do have it in that sport mode. And like I said, the sport mode will adjust the steering sensitivity. So it does have a nice weight to it there. When it comes to cabin noise, you guys may hear, I do have the air on right now. So if you think you hear some wind noise, that is actually what that is. But really cabin noise has been quite nice. And like I said, when you do hit the gas, the engine noise that comes into the cabin, that is a plus in my book. So definitely a fan of that as well. And touching on visibility, it is excellent in the Elantra. I can see perfectly fine out the back. Usually sedans, you're not gonna have any issues, but visibility is definitely on point. Shouldn't have any issues with the Elantra being a good daily driver for you there. But now I think it is time, let's check out the exterior of this new 2020 Hyundai Elantra. All right, so starting up front, you will find chrome horizontal bars on that front grille with the exception actually of the sport trim. Sport trim is gonna give you a black mesh design up there, but to the sides there, projector headlights are gonna come standard for all trims, but the limited and the sport trim level. For the limited and sport, which is what you're looking at right now, you will find LED headlights. So that's gonna help give you a little better illumination at night. And actually LED daytime running lights are gonna come standard for the eco limited and sport trim levels. And if you wanted that automatic feature, meaning the headlights will turn on automatically for you when it starts to get dark out, simply go with any trim, but the SE trim level, that is the only trim that will not give you that automatic headlight feature. But anyhow, let's make our way to the side here. To the side, you will find a chrome belt line molding. You guys can see it right underneath the windows there. That is gonna come standard for the limited and sport trim levels only. And there's gonna be some added side skirts if you were to go with the sport trim level, although we do not have that today, of course. But when it comes to the side mirrors, let's take a closer look here. They will come body colored power adjustable side mirrors for every single trim level and then we'll come heated with the SEL trim level and up and actually with integrated turn signals if you were to go with the limited or the sport trim levels. And then taking a look down at the wheel setup, let's get down here. 15 inch steel wheels with covers will come with the SE trim level, 15 inch alloy wheels with the Eco, SEL and Value are gonna give you 16 inch alloy wheels. Limited is gonna give you 17 inch alloy wheels. That is of course what you are looking at right now. And lastly, the Sport is gonna bump that wheel size up to 18 inches. So. If you wanted to easily distinguish between the different trim levels, simply look at the wheels, I suppose, because they are all quite different. But now let's move our way to the back here. Rear spoiler is actually gonna come standard with only the sport trim level. Every other trim level is gonna essentially look like this. So definitely looks kind of good. It kind of looks like it has the little lip built into it but it looks good back there led taillights are going to come with the limited and the sport trim levels rear diffuser down below is going to come with the sport and actually it looks like we do have a little bit of it here with the limited as well so definitely looks good down there and of course there is a single exhaust outlet tucked neatly away down there for every single trim level and you will actually get dual tips if you were to go with the sport but Again, that's not what you're looking at today. And so you guys know what we have to do next. And before we do it, I did want to mention that exhaust clip is actually going to differ slightly depending on the trim level. The Sport is going to give you a much deeper tone to it. It definitely sounds intense. But anyways, we do not have the Sport. I got to stop talking about it. As always, here is that exhaust clip. And so, but now since we are around back to open that rear trunk, there's a couple different ways to do it. There is a button on the key fob, so that is one way. You will actually get a hands-free trunk release if you go with the value trim level and up. And one additional way to open that rear trunk is simply press your thumb within the Hyundai logo. This is the coolest one. This is the coolest way to open the trunk. Sonata actually does this as well, but that is gonna be how I am going to open up every single time because that is kind of like a secret agent kind of way to open that up. But anyways, once opened up, cargo capacity is gonna come in at 14.4 cubic feet. And there is a 60-40 split if you need a little extra space there for all trim levels, meaning those rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space if you needed it. Then making your way up to the rear legroom, that is gonna come in at 35.7 inches. So for reference, I'm in even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. Those rear passengers will also find a rear center armrest with cup holders if you went with the limited or the sport trim levels. Those are the only two trim levels that are gonna give you that rear armrest. But either way, if you were curious if there was
was any rear ventilation, there is not for the rear passengers. They are simply going to have to rely on the front ventilation making its way into the rear, but still this is a smaller vehicle so there shouldn't be any issues there. But making our way to the front seats, cloth surfaces are going to come with the SE, SEL, Value, and Eco trim levels. If you went with the Limited or Sport, you will find these nice leather surfaces that we do have here today. And by the way, if you wanted heated seats, go with the value trim level and up, and there will be a power driver seat with power lumbar adjustments if you went with the limited that we have today. But taking a look up front then at the steering wheel, it is tilt and telescoping for all trim levels. It will come leather wrapped for the value trim level and up, and it is all manually adjustable as expected for this type of vehicle. But now let's make our way to the startup. Let me first start by showing you guys the key here. You do have your Hyundai logo on the one side and when you flip it over, lock, unlock, and again, that button to pop the rear hatch, but it is actually a push button start with keyless entry if you go with the value trim level and up. So therefore we do have that today. So all I'm going to do is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button, which is located just by the driver's right knee. Once started up, tachometer is on your left, speedometer is on your right. There is a small digital display front and center. One of the cool things about these gauges is there is kind of a checkered pattern within both the tachometer and speedometer. I remember seeing that in the Elantra Sport I previously reviewed as well. Definitely a more aggressive look to it. I do like that look and actually to control what is on the digital display as always there are steering wheel mounted controls on the right side there giving you a ton of different things like how many miles you have left until you hit empty which apparently is 419 miles that is a ton of miles until we hit empty that's it's definitely pretty impressive there outside temperature as well as a digital speedometer is probably what i would leave it on and also check out your safety information up there when you need your next oil change some radio information bluetooth definitely a ton of stuff you could check out up there but Touching on overall interior quality, dual zone climate control comes standard for all trim levels. Power sunroof is gonna come with the value sport and is gonna be optional on the limited. We do have that option today, so that's definitely nice as well. Wireless charging pad is gonna come standard on the limited. Homelink controls, once again, with the limited, that's gonna be up to three different garage doors found on the rear view mirror there dual USB charging ports for the eco trim level and up. And overall, I gotta say, I am definitely a fan of this interior. Of course, you got the leather seats. I like that, but everything ties together very well. Like there's an aluminum trim that ties together on the doors, onto the door handle, and then it kind of just keeps on going just above the glove box there. So it's like a continuous aluminum trim line that goes throughout the vehicle. Also like the two-tone interior that is specific to the car, I guess we have today, but that's always nice. Definitely a fan of that. But now let's get to one of the best parts of Hyundai. Hyundai does their tech and infotainment system so well. There's a five inch touchscreen display with the SE. That one's okay, but every single other trim level is going to give you a seven inch color touchscreen display. There is actually an eight inch color touchscreen display that's optional on the limited and the sport trim levels. That one's going to come with factory navigation, but Honestly, in this day and age, you don't need factory navigation. Here's why. If you have a smartphone, at least you don't need it because you will get Bluetooth and audio streaming for all trim levels. But if you go with the SEL trim level and up, you will also get Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Meaning, if you have a smartphone, simply hook it up to the Elantra. That will give you free navigation through your smartphone, which you will never have to pay to get updated. It always has updated maps. It actually gives you speed traps as well, so you don't speed in those speed traps. And it tells you the speed limit of any given road as well. So a lot comes with those two apps, especially the Android Auto one. That's the one I use. I'm always a fan of that. But you can also actually, through Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, like and dislike your Pandora songs up in that screen. I use that a lot too. You can check out your MPG numbers up there and also, of course, your radio settings. And by the way, when it comes to the sound system, you will find six speakers for all trim levels, but the limited. The limited trim level that we have today will give you an eight speaker infinity premium sound system, which is, by the way, optional on the sport. But you guys know what we have to do. Let's go ahead and turn on the radio here, see what we got planned, and let's test out the clarity of this one. See, and you just Gotta admit, the clarity is on point in this sound system. I don't know if it's the song, but definitely the Infinity sound system. Very nice clarity. Bass is nice as well, though you probably didn't hear it there. But before I played this clip, the bass is definitely quite nice. But the clarity is probably what impressed me the most on that Infinity sound system there. But so anyways, last thing on the tech display I wanted to mention is when you do put the Elantra in reverse, you will find a rear view camera with dynamic grid lines, 
for every single trim level, letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead me into safety. And so when it comes to safety, first thing I wanted to mention is the Hyundai Elantra has been named an IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus, which is the highest rating by that organization. So that is definitely a plus to start with. Front side and side curtain airbags will come standard as well as a driver's knee airbag up front. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Also standard, a tire pressure monitoring system, but also some of the more advanced safety features that will come standard on all trim levels is a forward collision avoidance assist system, lane keep assist, and a driver attention warning system. So if the car detects you're starting to get drowsy, it is gonna notify you, perhaps urging you to pull over or get a coffee or an energy drink or whatever. SEL trim level and up is also going to add a blind spot warning system with rear cross traffic alert. Blind spot warning, of course, being the little cars in the side mirrors there. So you don't go merging onto anybody on the highway. So that is definitely always nice as well. But so anyways, that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell button if you enjoy car reviews. That is what this channel is about. And I will see you guys in the next video. Stay gold.